So today we're going to talk about hair and makeup in the 1980s. Um, I think one of the best ways to describe the 1980s as a whole is just more is more. Um, everything in the 80s was about excess. Um, artificial glamour is kind of another good way um, to think about things in the 1980s. Um, people were just really concerned with always kind of being very done up um, when it kind of came to their hair and makeup. Um, so even if they were using like more natural colors a lot of times for things, um, they were wearing a lot of everything. Um, even if their hair wasn't necessarily like dyed in a natural color, um, their hair was probably huge or they had some very um, like eccentric or like unique kind of a hairstyle going on um so really yeah i think when and when any of us like picture the 80s i think the 80s is definitely a time that a lot of us are very familiar with um we don't necessarily think of things as being like natural and calm right i think a lot of the times we do really think of um just like that kind of world of excess and artificial glamour um so as far as makeup was concerned in the 1980s i think that there's a lot of things that um we are used to thinking of when we think of the 80s so a lot of us think of blush i think blush was um one of the major things to kind of take away as far as like makeup trends um in the 1980s goes so not only were people wearing blush um in their normal place right on their cheek but sometimes they're wearing it um like all the way up to their temples and sometimes people would wear it like closer to their eyes like by their eyebrows um so we're kind of coming out of these periods where maybe people were just looking sort of sort of like bronzy but they weren't necessarily like caked in blush but now we're back in the 80s and everybody is very very much into wearing their blush right um other colors that people would use you'd have really like bright lipstick colors um fuchsias reds orange pink um anything that really caught attention a lot of the times you would see somebody wearing in the 80s um we pretty much went through i feel like almost like every kind of color palette as far as like eyeshadow was concerned in the 80s like you see some people um that just wear more of like a bronzy eye makeup um and then really heavy face makeup but then you're going to see people um like cindy lopper who are going to be wearing almost every color uh some people would wear different colors on each of their eyes um so it was really a time i feel like of experimentation um, of expressing one's own like individuality and creativity um, but then there were also people who um, weren't necessarily looking like Cindy Lauper every single day right so we did see a lot of more like natural like rosy tones in makeup um, but even again like if it was something more natural that was being applied people were applying a lot of it um, there was definitely not really a huge trend of anybody not wearing a ton of makeup. Um, we definitely stepped away from that uh, for the 1980s, that is for sure. Um, another trend that you kind of saw in makeup in the 1980s was to have slightly like larger eyebrows. So people would either let them be, I feel like, um, a little bit more natural or they would actually like have them be like a little bit like bushier so Brooke Shields was kind of the one who helped inspire this um she would um just kind of let her eyebrows be like large and natural I don't know if you ever like looked at a picture of Brooke Shields but um she does have very large um very nice natural eyebrows right so sometimes people in the 80s would even like comb their eyebrows and hairs up so that they would even appear to be a little bit um larger I think Madonna is like another really good example of that if you're kind of looking for um that specific eyebrow look she um would wear that pretty often um pink eyeshadow started being worn a lot in the 1980s that wasn't necessarily something that I feel like we saw um a ton in a lot of the other time periods but in the 80s for sure um people were definitely wearing some pink eyeshadow um whether it was something more like on the rosy side or it was something very very bright almost like a fuchsia um there were definitely people wearing a little bit of everything. Um, another person who was really iconic, um, I feel like besides like Madonna and Cyndi Lauper um, and Brooke Shields as far as like their makeup and overall look was um, in the 1980s was Boy George. So Boy George is still a musician today um, and he was actually a part of the English New Romantic movement. So they are known to have more of like um, like a dramatic kind of a makeup appearance all the time um, and he kind of brought that over to us here in America so it's kind of similar I feel like if you're thinking of something um, to try to picture it looks a lot like um, like a lot of like the club kid makeup that we would start to see um, probably like maybe towards the end of this period but really like in the 90s um, and he still wears very like expressive creative makeup um, to this day so he's a really cool person to kind of look at if you're looking for more of um, and like individualistic sort of approach to like how people looked in the 80s like obviously like not everybody is going around looking like Boy George or Cyndi Lauper um but they were certainly like large individual um influencers of this time period as far as looks were concerned um so as far as 
hair goes um, in the 1980s. So I think the one thing that most of us think of the most in the 1980s when it comes to hair um, is probably just like gigantic permed curly hair, right? Um, so a perm is just when you would get um, curls basically like chemically permanently put into your hair, essentially. Um, and since the trend was to have really large voluminous curly hair, a lot of women were doing that to their hair if their hair texture was naturally straight. Um, so you saw a lot more people who were chemically processing their hair, um, probably a lot more intensely than ever before, just because it was also really popular, um, to dye your hair in the 1980s. So there were a lot of people, um, that were bleaching their hair and, um, uh, because of stars like Madonna, it was actually really trendy to have these like really obvious like dark roots and then have really, really bleached blonde hair. Um, so that was trendy. Um, it was also trendy to have really fun, like, creative hair colors. Um, Cyndi Lauper is probably your best example of that, um, from the 1980s. She's probably had just about every hair color, and I, she still continues to do that to this day. Um, so you saw a little bit of everything as far as hair color was concerned in the 80s, but definitely you're seeing a lot more people who are probably, um, heavily processing their hair, and hair is probably going to come out of this decade a lot more damaged, um, than maybe it has in a little bit of time, just because I feel like the 60s and the 70s, like, though there were people that were still like heavily styling and processing their hair um we definitely had a little bit more of like a step back um to more of like a natural appearance for a lot of people so this is definitely um a large jump in the other direction uh as far as like more natural hairstyling is involved um is concerned I mean um and so not only did you have the woman with like the really large like curly hair um but there was also like um, this push towards sort of like a power dressing movement as far as like women's um, personal style was concerned. So it was sort of like a look that was inspired by menswear. So a lot of women were also cutting their hair very, very short um, and using a lot of hairspray. Pretty much everything in the 80s uh, is all about hairspray. Um, and they were actually having these very like stiff, more like masculine appearing hairstyles. Um, so there were styles like that. Uh, Princess Diana had like a really famous, um, hairstyle in the 1980s. It was a little bit shorter, but it was still a little bit more like feathered and fluffy. So it wasn't necessarily, um, the intensely styled and like shellacked, uh, more like menswear inspired looks that you were seeing other women wear. Um, some women were wearing mullets. So, um, the trend of the mullet that began in the 70s definitely kind of took over in the 1980s. Um, and there were a lot of people that were wearing, um, uh, mullets who were men and women, so it was definitely one of those hairstyles that sort of, um, could work for everyone. Should it work for everyone? Maybe not, but everybody was wearing it, right? Um, and mullets could be curly, they could be straight, you could have, like, teased bangs, you could have just about anything with them, um, but definitely you were seeing a lot of people wearing those, um, as far as like hair product goes, so hairspray, I think a lot of us think in the 80s, we know everybody was spraying their hair, trying to get this huge like volume. Um, but they were also using like a lot of mousse just to try to keep their curls like a little bit more like crunchy and like structured as well. So you're seeing a lot of hair product being used. Um, people were going to have bangs also a lot like in the 1980s, but a lot of times they weren't necessarily like the way that I think that we think of bangs today. They were very like fluffy um, and voluminous as well. So really everything um, was really about volume um, in the 1980s. Um, and then one other trend that you would see sometimes in hair in the 1980s too was sort of like an aerobics inspired look. So because of that, you would see a lot of people and with kind of like, I feel like the famous like 1980s side ponytail. Um, so people were wearing those, they were wearing scrunchies. Um, all of the iconic looks that you think of when you think of the 1980s were definitely being worn by people um, in like movies and TV, but also just in their real lives too. Um, punk was still like a pretty big like influential um, kind of movement in the 1980s but the punk scene almost started to become like a little bit more like gothic but you were still seeing a lot of the same um, like spiky hairstyles that were a little bit shorter um, that both men and women were wearing so that was still um, happening but it was also becoming a little bit more mainstream for people to look like that um, thanks to people like Cindy Lauper who kind of made it a little bit more like socially acceptable for everyone um, to kind of look a little bit more like creative and expressive um, without necessarily like having it associated with you being like an outcast or anything like that. Um, so you really do see like a little bit of everything um, as far as like women's hairstyles were concerned um, in the 1980s um, and men's hairstyles were pretty much the same um, as far as like creativity um, and like the spectrum of them goes. So again, um, Volume's really, really important. Men were also getting perms, um, also wearing their hair very, very large. Um, so that was something that kind of like went um, kind of across the board for everyone. That was really just like the general trend for hair in the 1980s was just to have volume 
and to have it be um, really curly a lot of the time too. Um, and another big trend that kind of took over for men um, was to have very like long curly voluminous hair and that was really because a lot of like the 1980s like hair bands um, that were coming out. So that was like Poison and Motley Crue um, and Def Leppard and their looks became very very iconic um, and very influential on the way that like a lot of men decided um, to kind of present themselves. So you're gonna see a lot of men um, with like this really long voluminous hair um, compared to like probably more like in the 60s and 70s, you saw men who had very, very long hair, but it did not necessarily have like the level of volume that you're gonna see a lot of people have um, in the 1980s. So it was definitely a big difference um, between the 70s and the 80s there, I would say. Um, and then you have some bands like um, A Flock of Seagulls, which definitely if you have never looked up a photo of them, um, I recommend it because I have never seen this hairstyle before. They had very like, um, like a very like asymmetrical hairstyle. Um, that really I don't even think I could do justice explaining, but that helped make things like that um, very popular as well in the 1980s. So really you saw everything from like these like very like highly stylized um, asymmetrical styles like them, um, but then you also saw like the very like long and fluffy hair. Um, but then you also saw, you know, not everybody is going to be able to have their, like, 1980s hairband hair, you know, when they're going to the office or anything. Um, so like the women, you also saw people that did have, like, the shorter, fluffier hairstyles. So that was something I feel like that both men and women had very similar, um, like, hairstyles in as well. Really, I feel like most of the hairstyles in the 1980s could be kind of, like, interchangeable between men and women, which is cool. Um, because I think that that's a trend that we, like, started to see, like, in the late 60s when men started to grow their hair out too. Um, and I think, obviously, like, to this day today, you still see that, um, pretty much, like, any hairstyle could be worn by anyone. And I think you're, like, really the 80s kind of, like, locks that in, um, and makes that, like, an apparent thing that it's like okay for everybody to kind of look this way um so you saw men who had like that short fluffy hair but still volume was very important um mullets obviously mullets were still very very popular um i don't know that you saw more men than women with mullets but um definitely there were people wearing them right um you still had the people that were styling their hair um in more of like the punk way with like the spikier hair um so that's really that really never goes away because we still see plenty of people um that look like that today um you started to see um among like african-american men um they started to wear their hair um in sort of like a glossy like loosely curled look um so we started to see um kind of like a, a different take on like a permanent um wave hairstyle where the curls weren't necessarily um, as like compact and tight, they were a little bit looser. So that's, um, one style you're going to see. You're also going to start to see people wearing, um, the high top fade in their hair, which is basically just, um, you have a lot of height on the top of your hair, but the sides are shaved very, very short. Um, and that is something that once we get into the nineties, that is very, very popular in the nineties as well. Um, as far as facial hair is concerned, I really think, um, I read once that the 1980s can be described as um, the decade of the mustache, and I really do think that that is probably the most accurate way to describe it. Um, Tom Selleck's mustache in uh, Magnum P.I. is probably one of the best examples of like the classic like 1980s um, mustache, and really if you look at photos of everybody from like celebrities to just like regular people in the 1980s, um, it almost seems like they were either like clean shaven or they had some kind of like epic mustache. Um, going on so usually it was something in the realm of a mustache if anyone was going to have facial hair um but really yeah I think the biggest takeaway from the 1980s is just to remember that um more is more and the more excessive and the more like artificial things were um probably the more on trend you were going to be um and now that people were getting more and more access to celebrities because the internet was starting to be um a global thing now at the very end of the 80s um you're going to see the like celebrities and musicians just really like it probably influenced people more um, than they were ever able to before and because they're becoming more accessible that means that um, the styles that they have are more accessible too so it's not necessarily like you're just like oh like dreaming of looking like Hollywood glamour um, now you can really know exactly how you need to do it just because you have that access to these people um, that you were unable to have before um, so that is the 1980s <laughs>